Good morning. <coughs> Good to see everybody here in Sunday school class. We do appreciate you being out with us this morning. We'll go ahead and take up our prayer request. Anyone have a spoken request you want the class to pray about? Yeah, let's just continue to pray for Sister Nancy. I saw her at the funeral. Bless her. Glad to see her. Yeah, yeah. Hadn't seen her in a while. Others? Yes, uh, Kay Stevens, yeah. Just remember, remember Kay and Steve, yeah. Others that are sick amongst us are, are usually here as well. Others? Just remember these, yeah. All uh, unspoken requests, just lift your hand. Let's remember all these that we can. Remember to pray for our service. Pray for our nation. Remember our Tuesday night prayer meeting. Praying for elections. Continue to pray for that as well. Let's all pray together. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for each and every blessing that you've given us, God. We thank you, Lord, for... For keeping us, Lord, and, and bring us back to your house once again, Lord. We just thank you for for each and everything that you do for us, God. Things that we don't even realize, Father, that you move and minister in our life, God. And Lord, we bring these needs before you, God, knowing that you hear and answer prayer. We ask, God, that you would be with these that are sick in body. These that are traveling, Lord, we pray for them, Lord, that you would protect them as well. And Father, we pray, Lord, for each unspoken request, Lord. I pray that you would just touch each one. And be with us in our service today, Lord. We just pray your, your blessing, your anointing upon each thing that's done here today. Let it be done for your glory and your honor. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. The title of our lesson today, Leaders Who Rebelled Against God. Our central truth is Israel's rebellion reminds us of divine punishment for sin. All sin will be judged. One of unforgiveness. Right, sin. Introduction. Israel was faced, has faced a lot in a short time. They witnessed the ten plagues. We've had that. Experienced the Passover, escaped from Egypt. They battled the Amalekites, received the Ten Commandments, entered into a covenant relationship with Yahweh. The Lord had ordained a priesthood, last week's lesson, Aaron, and provided both the moral and ceremonial laws the priests needed to serve him. Thus equipped with divine instruction, the Israelites left the Mount of God. After leaving Sinai, the, the Lord led the people straight across the desert to Kadesh, located about 150 miles north of Sinai and 50 miles south of the town of Beersheba. They arrived in Kadesh a little more than a year after the exodus. They were poised to enter the promised land. What should have been a time of victory and fulfilled promises turned out to be a season of tragedy and misfortune. And it all hinged on a small group of men ironically leaders in the nation of Israel. In this lesson, we will study a story of opportunity lost, hope delayed. We will see the tragic consequences of not trusting God completely and disobeying his instruction. So yes, just like our introduction told us, the Israelites left Mount Sinai, they traveled north, camped at Kadesh, and here is where we're at in today's lesson. And they are poised to take possession of the land that God had promised to them. And you can imagine at this time a feeling of expectation maybe. Uh, you know, God has brought us this far and now we're right on the, right on the edge, right? We're, we're right here. We're ready to, to, to take hold of this promised land. And then something changed, didn't it? Uh, a bad report. That bad report created a loss of faith in the people. And so as, and that's what our lesson is about today. So as we look at our lesson today, we cannot underestimate the value of good leadership, godly leadership, whether it be, uh, you know, in, in church, in our community, in our nation as well. Uh, so important. So important, as we'll see today. And also, as we look at today's lesson, let's look at 
ourselves, you know, look at yourself and your own life. What do you do when you face an obstacle, a big one, a giant, right? What do you do? Do you, do you give up without a fight or do you dig in? So think about, I always think about, <coughs> you know, uh, Elisha when the Syrian king was wanting to capture him. What did he do? He sent a whole army after one man. And they surrounded the town, and of course, Elisha, you all know this, Elisha's servant got up, and he looked out the window, and he said, oh, no, we're in trouble. We're surrounded. You know, the enemy is all around us. And he woke up, Elisha, and what did Elisha do? Elisha prayed for God to open up his servant's eyes and really see what's going on, right? And he did, and we know what he saw after that. What did he see? He saw those that are for us are greater in number than those that are against us. And that's, you know, that is our promise. You know, I'm getting into the lesson, but that, that is your promise and my promise as a child of God that with God and you, you're a majority. No matter, no matter what you face, no matter how big the giant is, no matter how bad the report is. So let's go ahead and get into our lesson. Numbers chapter 13 verses 1 through 3 and the Lord spake unto Moses saying send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan which I gave unto the children of Israel of every tribe of their fathers shall you send a man every one a ruler among them and Moses by the commandment of the Lord sent them from the wilderness of Paran all these men notice were heads of the children of Israel leaders right so so God instructed Moses here in Numbers to send spies into the land, and that's a good idea, isn't it, to know your enemy, you know, before, kind of scout out, I guess, a little bit. One man from, from each tribe, and you think about, you know, you go back and you think about Abraham, you know, and the covenant God made with him, Isaac and Jacob, and then the 12 tribes, and now all this great number, this nation, uh, that, that now is part of that covenant that God had made with, had, had made with Abraham, and it fulfilled that. Because uh, his seed had multiplied, and other nations saw, you know, what that, what it was like to live under the favor of God, even in enslavement, right? You know, as they lived under the favor of God, they they were they were even blessed there, and uh, in growth. So, uh, so on their journey to this point, as the introduction told us, they've developed into a nation. They, you know, they they've done they've they've done all these things. They they've seen God move. So what, what was it that remained? Just this one thing, right? This, this one thing remained, and that was to, to take the land of promise. If you, the book of Deuteronomy is kind of a review of kind of like what Moses went through here. And so if we go to Deuteronomy and look at verse chapter 1, 6 through 8, we're kind of in the same time period here. The Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt that long enough in this mount, or Sinai, let's move it. Turn you, take your journey, and go to the mount of the Amorites, and to all the places nigh there, and to in the plain and the hills, the vale, the south, by the seaside, the land of the Canaanites, and by Lebanon, the great river, the river Euphrates, and the, and the promise, right? Before I have set the land before you, go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers, the covenant, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. The, again, the fulfillment of that covenant that God had made. So they were there, you know, like I say, they were on the edge, ready to go in. And let's look at what happens next here. It, it's, again, it's from Deuteronomy. Moses writes it here. says, Behold, the Lord our God has set the land before thee. Again, go up and possess it, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath said unto thee. Fear not, neither be discouraged. But what happened? The people. Moses records here, And ye came near unto me, every one of you, and said, you know what? <laughs> I know what God said. God said, go and possess the land. Let's send men before us, and they shall search us out the land and bring us word again by what way we must go up and into what cities we shall come. And Moses even said, this, this saying pleased me. And I took 12. I took 12 of your leaders, one from every tribe. So some, again, you know, 
this idea of sending spies in actually originated from a people. And if you read this, maybe it's even a hesitancy on their part. Because again, you know, God said, you know, neither be discouraged, neither fear, take the land. Well, let's go in and look, you know, let's, let's spy it out and see what's going on. Go, and then, you know, if you go back to Numbers, uh, our scripture today, then uh, Moses brought this before the Lord, and the Lord said, okay, go ahead, consent, choose you out 12 spies, spy out the land, see its fertility, its, its beauty, uh, its bounty, uh, and again, you know, an exciting, exciting time, right, for, for the children of Israel, you know, very encouraging, and, uh, you know, look what, you know, look what awaits us here. You know, what, you know, what was that promise? You know, a land flowing with milk and honey, you know, and God had promised it to the children of Israel. God's promised us things too. And so, but, but again, like the children of Israel, it's up to us, you know, to, to go in, you know, and to, to take what God has promised us. Uh, Paul, writing to the Philippian church, says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus we can grasp that we can take a hold of that that promise and and we can we can live that uh, Jesus <laughs> tells us in the book of John he says I am the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved shall go in and out and find pasture the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill destroy it's a, one of the giants in our land in, in, in our in our spiritual walk isn't it but I am come Jesus said that you they that's you and me might have life have it more abundantly and again you, you, if you're on the edge you need to step in you know and, and lay a hold of that and, and, and not not hesitate uh, but you know exercise your and you know and it's faith isn't it you exercise your faith in God and in his promises um, just like the, the children of Israel you know they've got a choice now here you know to exercise their faith in God talking about leaders Max Lucado says this, I do believe that leaders have to be held to a higher standard, especially Christian leaders. And he says, I put myself in that camp. And, and that's true. And you think about leaders, uh, spiritual men and women, you know, and the reputation they have, you know, and, and you, you look at that, you know, and you can take comfort in that. But then think about times when maybe they've fallen, you know, or maybe failed. It hurts, hurts, doesn't it? Hurts us, hurts me. So yeah, there's a, there's a greater a greater responsibility there for that. All right, next part of our lesson. <coughs> I crammed a bunch of verses on this one. And they returned from searching the land after forty days, and they went and came to Moses, to Aaron, to all the congregation of the children of Israel into the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and to all the congregation they shewed them the fruit of the land and they told them they said we came into this land where thou sent us and surely surely it floweth with milk and honey and this is the fruit of it nevertheless the people be strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled and very great more we saw the children of Anak there the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south the Hittites the Jebusites the Amorites dwell in the mountains the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able, well able to overcome it. But the men that with, with him said, We be not able to go up against this people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched as the land of, uh, to the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature. And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Forty days, forty days, the spies, they, they went and they, they made a big circle, you know, and they, they saw the land. They observed the people, the cities, the walled cities, and then... Uh, the, the bounty, the abundance of the land itself, and they bring back some of the fruit thereof. You know, the two men, you know, with a, with a 
thing, a cluster of grapes, I guess, so large that it took two of them to, to bring it back. You know, it was so heavy. Grapes. You ever, anybody ever have cotton candy grapes? I did this week. Very good. All gone by my hand. We've got issues at my house about grapes. Uh, you asked me about it after class. I'll tell you the whole story about it. But yeah, grapes. But then, okay, so back. So yeah, so so their report <coughs> to Moses to to the people. Oh, it's a land of plenty. Uh, it is a land that truly it, it floweth with uh, with milk and honey everywhere they went. You know, they saw the bounty of the land, just as God told them. You know, God told them, you know, this is how it was going to be. Think about that. Everything God said so far has come to pass. It's true, right? But then there's that word, nevertheless, right? Or but. That's another translation, right? Nevertheless, in spite of all that we saw, the people be strong that dwell in the land. The cities are walled and very great, and moreover we saw the children of Anak there. And in the, another version, it says, nevertheless, but, that's the same kind of word, right? But the people who live in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified. So you think about those words, you know, it changed, it's kind of a change of direction, isn't it? Oh, it's so good, it's so good, it's so good. Nevertheless, when you hear somebody say that, or it's a, it's so good, it's so good, but get ready. <laughs> get ready for the other side. Uh, well, they say the other shoe to drop or whatever. But uh, so, you know, and, and so, you know, it goes from uh, positive to negative. There's many enemies in this land. They are very strong. Uh, there's many obstacles there. There's the sons of Anak. There's the, the, the all the ites, right? There's the... Amalekites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, the Canaanites. So obstacle after obstacle is listed here. Excuse after excuse. Excuses, right? Um, I wasn't here last Sunday, but uh, Brother Eric's dad preached, and Cindy was telling me some of the things he said, and he talked about, as being a pastor, you know, getting all kind of excuses. You remember that? Anybody that was here, you remember him talking about excuses, you know? People call up, you know, and so-and-so's not feeling good. I can't come to Sunday school. And then the, the one that amazed me the most was, you know, somebody called him up and said, my dog's sick. And I can't make it. I almost texted Brother Eric this morning and said, my dog's sick. I don't, I don't even have a dog. <laughs> That's an excuse, isn't it? But uh, so, you know, so here we go. Here's all the reasons, you know, that we can't accept what God has promised. This is, this is why we can't accept it. I can't do what God has called me to do. Uh-oh. <laughs> has God ever spoke to you about something? You know, have you made excuses about that? That's between you and God. Uh, but... Uh, but here we go, the, 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 the ten spies, these spies, uh, now their report is full of what seems to be insurmountable obstacles, again, in the land that God had promised them. And then there's a voice of reason. There's a voice of reason that pops up, and this is Caleb. I love Caleb. I want to be like Caleb. Caleb said, what was he, 80 years old when he said, I feel like I'm still 20 or something, something to that effect, didn't he? Before he was, went and got that mountain, that's what I, when I get to be 80, I want to say, well, I feel like I'm 20. I'm going to have to feel a little better than I am now, though. <laughs> <laughs> and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, because this is what God's instructions were. For we are well able, well able to overcome it. But the men, the ten, that had went up with him said, no, no, we're not able. We're, we're not because they're so much stronger than, than we are. Uh, 
So we can't take the land. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched. So now the, the ten seems like this evil report, you know, another translation uses the word slander, which kind of lets you think maybe they're making up things now, right? And uh, so, 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 you know, where Caleb said, you know, let's do what God has told us to do. Uh, you know, Caleb said, we're well able to overcome it. Now, his faith was not so much in himself, and it wasn't even in the Israeli army, I don't think, but his faith was, was in God because he had seen the same thing that the ten had seen. He had seen the same obstacles, the same giants. But, you know, he knew that with God he could, you know, that they could take the land. But the other spies, they, you know, they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't relinquish. They wouldn't change their mind. And remember, you know, we talked about in the first part of the lesson, these, these men are leaders, one from each tribe. So each one of these men were held in high esteem by the people. They had great confidence in them. So when they said something, the people listened. So, and, and again, that goes back to what the importance of godly, good leadership. Uh, so, but they, they said, we're, you know, we're not able. You know, they're stronger than, than we are. Uh, so now we see the ten spies again, you know, they, the evil report, they kind of exaggerate or they slander, and uh, you know, now the land is described, this this land is, it's going to eat up, it'll eat us up. It's a land that eat us up in heaven, Sarah, and all the people are such a great stature there. So now what do we see? We see fear. And we see fear instead of what? Faith. And there's so much, you know, uh, so much to look at here. You know, the this again, this this evil report that they that they brought up. You know, their fear was driving them. You know, to to make up things. You know, or make things seem a lot worse than than what they are. You know, and they mentioned the sons of of Anak. Uh, you know, and and their you know their they're giants. And notice what he what they say about them. <laughs> That's a giant, isn't it? He's a mean looking guy. But notice what he says. We were like grasshoppers in our own sight. So that's a loss of faith, isn't it? It's not that they were that much bigger, and they were probably I know they were bigger, you know, I mean, you know, what but in our own sight, we were like grasshoppers. And they were like giants, so it's this difference, you know, it, it, it's, it's multiplied, it's magnified, right? And so, and what caused that lack of faith replaced by fear? And, and so, so the ten, you know, they, they stick with this, with this story, and they paint this picture that, that you know, and, and the people listen to them, again, because... You know, they're leaders, you know, and they have respect for them. Uh, but they've let, they've, they've let down their people is what they've done here. But uh, so, so we see, you know, the giants here. And, and not only do we see the giants, but we see them being magnified. And again, that's because of fear and not faith. So... Just for a minute, let's think about another giant in Scripture, right? You know where I'm going here. I'm going to 1 Samuel, <coughs> and this is Goliath. And the Philistine Goliath, he said, I defy the armies of God this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Bring somebody out. When Saul and all of Israel, the whole army, heard this, they heard the words of the Philistine, Philistine. they were dismayed. And greatly afraid, fear instead of faith. Nobody would go out. So we know what happened, don't we? Uh, David showed up. 
a ruddy-faced boy. And then said David to this Philistine, Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defi- defiled or defied. The Lord will, de- and this is faith, this is not fear. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. I will smite thee. I will take thine head from thee. I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth. How? Not with sword and spear. David knew what Caleb knew, what Joshua knew, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. That would make you want to go out and fight Mike Tyson in his prime. The battle is the Lord's. He will give it into your hand. And that's a message for, for us. That's a message for every child of God. When we try to fight the battle ourselves, we're not careful we'll allow fear to replace our faith because we can't do it ourselves but we have to always remember as a child of God that you have an advocate you have you have somebody that will fight for you so David in faith of course we know what happened he defeated Goliath he defeated that giant who should have easily defeated him Nevertheless, see how I changed there? Goliath should have defeated David. Nevertheless, we're changing direction. God fought for David, and David knew this. So, um, again, you go back to the spies, the ten, you know, that their, their fear because of their evil report took the heart of the people you go back to uh, Deuteronomy where Moses is recording all this <coughs> you murmured in your tents and said because the Lord hated us he hath brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us whither shall we go up our brethren have discouraged our heart our brethren have discouraged our heart saying the people is greater and taller than we the cities are great and walled moreover we have seen the sons of Anakims there but then you weren't willing to go up. You rebelled against God. Your God's plain word. You complained in your tents. God hates us. He hauled us out of Egypt in order to dump us here. A death sentence for sure. How can we go up? We're trapped in a dead end. Our brothers, the leaders, right, took all the wind out of our sails, telling us the people are bigger. They're stronger. Their cities are huge. Their defense is massive. We even saw Anakite giants there. So they took their eyes off of God, who had done what? What had God done for them up to this point? Wow. We go back and think, right? The plagues, you know, delivering them, you know, from, from Pharaoh's army at the Red Sea, taking them all the way, all the way to this point, to the edge. All they had to do was go in. And this is where fear replaced faith. So for us, think about this. We, in our spiritual walk, encounter obstacles. Right? Anybody? Anybody ever run into an obstacle on your spiritual walk? Sometimes maybe even a giant. Uh. So when this happens, you know, again, what do we do? You know, if we allow fear to replace our faith, even the small obstacles become giants because we focus on them. Uh, Our focus, you know, will make them grow. So having within us that voice of Caleb, (laughs) yeah, Uh, a voice of faith, trust, hope, Knowing, you know, instead of focusing on the giant, I focus on God who is with me. Uh, Hebrews 12 and 2 says, Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the chain, 
and is now, as my advocate, he is set down at the right hand of the Father. Uh, there's all kind of verses, you know, that, 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 that come through my mind here. Uh, you go to the book of Romans. Uh, uh, who shall separate us? I can look over them from the love of Christ. Tribulation. Anybody have tribulation, distress, persecution, uh, famine, nakedness, peril, sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter, but nay. There's another change in direction, isn't it? Just like nevertheless, just like but. Nay, and all these things and everything else that you face in life, we, you and God, are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So we are more than conquerors. Um, now, that's easy to say, so we still have to exercise that faith and allow it to overcome any fear that enters into our life. Um, give thanks be to God, which, <laughs> can't see that either which calleth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. There's nowhere in Scripture that we're promised defeat with Christ. Nowhere. Everywhere we're promised victory, aren't we? Any comments here before we go on? Yeah, it's, you know, and it's, again, for, for Israel here, it was, you know, they just allowed, they took their focus off of God, you know. And it's the same for our nation as a whole today, as we see it. Numbers 14, verses 1 through 5, and all the congregation whole bunch of them they lifted up their voice and cried and the people wept that night and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses against Aaron and the whole congregation said to them would God that we had died in the land of Egypt or would God we had died in this wilderness wherefore hath the Lord brought us in this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey were it not better for us to return into Egypt and they said one to another let us make a captain let us get somebody else in charge maybe one of these ten spies right and let us return into Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron, hearing this, they fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. So these ten spies, uh, being, again, tribal leaders, they had convinced the people. We can't take it. You know, in spite of what God has said, in spite of what God has done, by the miracles that we've already seen, we can't take this land. And so discouragement sinks in. And again, faith, I keep saying this, but faith replaced by fear. And when that happens, then discouragement spreads through the camp like wildfire. It's more contagious than any virus that, or anything else that, that we've ever encountered, you know. And the people groan, they wept, and, and, and the terror just took any courage that they might have had from them. Uh, because that's the easiest path, right? Uh, so, so they, God declares to them here. You know, He told them to possess the land. They refused. They murmured. They actually rebelled against God. They went against what God had told them to do. And they said, "Why did we ever leave Egypt? You know, we, you know, God brought us here to die in this wilderness." God brought us here to be enslaved by this, these other people that we cannot defeat. Uh, so, so they, you know, in their rebellion, uh, you know, Moses and Aaron recognize what's going on here. You know, when the people rebelled against God, judgment was about to fall upon them. So Moses and Aaron, you know, they, they fall, they intercede. 
it, I mean, it doesn't really say that here, but that's what they're doing here is they fall upon their face. Once again, you know, Moses is interceding for this, for this stiff-necked people and, and, you know, and, and, and is about to, you know, plead his case before God because he knows what's going to happen. You know, they've, they've rejected God. And so God was going to um, bring judgment upon them. And you think about the, you know, what led led to all this. What did that, you know, what did, what was it that led to this rebellion? It was that report, that evil report, that slanderous report uh, that kind of, you know, they made up some things. So it was what? It was words, wasn't it? So. You know, what does Proverbs tell us? It said, death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So they, you know, they, they spread, you know, this false information. The people took it. And because of that, you know, they re- rebelled against, against, against God. The dreadful heffalumps. Anybody ever read Winnie the Pooh? I, I'll be honest with you, I've never read the book. You know, I've seen it, you know, and I know there's Eeyore and all this stuff, but in A.A. A. Milne's book about Winnie the Pooh, the 100-acre wood was usually a place of fun and pleasure. Yet there was one thing that Pooh, Piglet, and Tigger feared above all else, these dreadful heffalumps. Just the mention of their name caused him to shake with fear, even though... I didn't know this, but the heffalumps don't even exist. Wow. The fear of Pooh and his friends was unfounded. Know this. God, who used Joshua and Caleb to defeat giant Canaanites, can overcome the heffalumps of your life. You got any heffalumps in your life? Any make-believe giants, I guess, right? Uh, Sometimes, you know, we dwell on things so much and they get so big. And then when we actually decide to turn and face them, we're surprised at how small they are. Because it's you and you and God's a majority always. All right, so six through nine. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephna, which were of them that searched the land and rent their clothes. They saw, again, this rebellion and rejection. God. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it, it's an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. I want you to remind you of something, you know, 40 years after they wander in the wilderness and they start to go into the into the promised land and take it under Joshua's leadership. What was going on on the other side? Those people, they were actually, they had heard about these Hebrews, this army, had, and they, were, they feared, they feared what was coming towards them. But that's not what, that's not what, the ten spies, you know, that wasn't their story, was it? You know, they talked about how brave and how strong and how big they were. And, and, and Joshua and Caleb, you know, rightfully so, said, rebel not against the Lord. You know, th- their defense is departed from them. We can overcome them. So, again, they, they were so concerned about this rebellion. They knew what God was going to do. They rent their clothes themselves, you know, and... Uh, and, and tried to encourage the people, you know, to change their mind, you know. And again, they all saw the same thing, the 12, there was 12 of them. There was 12 of them. And they all saw the same thing, it was just different reports, so there's different perspectives, right? They all saw the same thing, tell a different story. So, uh, uh, pleading with the people, again, you look at verse 9, he says, the Lord is with us, fear them not. And, you know, where the ten reported that this land would eat up the inhabitants, Joshua and Caleb said, this land, these people are bred to us. 
opposite. And that's what, you know, fear and faith is opposite too, isn't it? You know, faith, faith drives you to declare this, what Joshua and Caleb declared. Fear drove the ten to declare we can't. We can't do it, you know. There's no way we can do it. They lost their faith. Any comments here? Okay, 10 through 11 says, All the congregation had stoned them with stones. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long? How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe? So, so here again, you know, so quickly things had changed. And now they were out of touch with God. They had, they had rejected God. And they were disobedient. And, uh, and, you know, they didn't think he was able to accomplish what he said he would accomplish. And they were moved to the point that they were going to stone Joshua and Caleb and maybe Moses and Aaron as well, you know. They were going to stone anybody that, that stood in their way, you know, of, of rebellion. Uh, so they couldn't really tell right now what, you know, good from evil, right from wrong. They, you know, and the Lord is long-suffering. And we know even with the exodus and the journey, he was long-suffering to the children of Israel, just like he's long-suffering to you and I. And, but there comes a time and a point, right, you know, where enough is enough. And, and, and I think, you know, God declares, you know, this, this is that point. You know, how long shall I bear with this evil congregation, this murmur against me? I've, look at this. You want to murmur against God? Remember this. He'll hear it. <laughs> or you want to murmur against anybody else or about somebody else, he's going to hear it. I heard what you murmured against me. I heard that you said that you, went, you know, that, that I brought you in this wilderness to die. Well, guess what? That's what's going to happen to this generation. Uh, this generation uh, is going to wander uh, in the wilderness. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness. All that were numbered of you according to your whole number from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Now, those ten spies, you know, they're, they got immediate judgment uh, because they were, you know, they, they didn't even survive, you know, past, you know, going into the wilderness. Uh, but then for Joshua and Caleb, uh, you shall not come into the land, the, the people, the concerning which I swear to make you dwell in, except Caleb, the son of Jeff, Jephnu, and Joshua, the son of Nun. Again, faith over fear will keep us in the graces of God, won't it? I mean, you know, it will keep us where we need to be in a relationship with God. Um, looks like our time's about gone, but uh, we do appreciate your attention this morning. Comment?
Okay, I want to welcome everybody this morning. Glad to have everybody's come out. Hope everybody's survived a rainy week. But uh, I tell you what, if you, all that's happening in Carl's country, I'm sure glad I live in Russell Springs. But uh, with so many destruction, and we want to hold all those people up in prayer. We're going to. Uh, a tragic, tragic time. I just couldn't imagine losing my home and everything that I had. But there's a lot of people that's, that's lost that this week, and we want to hold them up in prayer. Uh, good to see Sister Helen back with us. We missed her. Glad to her, have her back with us. <laughs> want to continue to pray for her, and, and she's going through a difficult time. I uh, do want to tell everybody... Since it's been raining this week, my sales has been down on my produce, so I brought y'all some tomatoes. So anybody wants a tomato for their lunch, that RAV4 right out front with a wheel on the back, just open the back door and get you a tomato for your lunch. And so y'all can have them. But uh, the Lord, he has. He's really blessed my crops this year. And I just thank him for it. So y'all get to enjoy them today. I do want to remind the men, next Saturday is uh, men's breakfast, the first Saturday in October. It starts at 8 o'clock, so come out and enjoy another men's breakfast. We really have been having good crowds, and if you ain't, you ain't never come, well, come try it, and you'll enjoy it. Have a good food, good breakfast, short devotion afterwards. You still have plenty of time next Saturday to do whatever you want, so you're invited in. Okay, if everybody stand. We'll start the uh, sign to help sing this morning. Well, I guess we hope it rains all next week for Joe's crops too, right? <laughs> Not for the sales of them, but for the growth of them. Uh, it's good to see everybody here this morning to worship the Lord. It's a beautiful day, isn't it, that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's help us sing the old gospel ship. <laughs> Gonna take a trip in the good old gospel ship. I'm going far beyond the sky. Oh, I'm gonna shout and sing until the heavens ring while I'm bidding this world goodbye. Have to bring, and that is why I sing all my joy with you. I'll share. I'm going to take a trip in the good old gospel ship and go sailing through the air. Oh, I'm going to take a trip in the good old gospel ship. I'm going far beyond the sky. Oh, I'm going to shout and sing until the heavens. can scarcely wait, I know I'll not be late, for I'll spend my time in prayer. And when my ship comes in, I will leave this world of sin and go sailing through the air. Oh, I'm going to take the trip in the good old gospel ship. I'm going far beyond. Much 
trot you find You'll sure be left behind While I go sailing through the air Oh, I'm going to take a trip In the good old gospel ship I'm going far beyond the sky Oh, I'm going to shout and sing sailing through the air. Oh, I'm going to take a trip in the good old gospel ship. I'm going far beyond the sky. Oh, I'm going to shout and sing until the heavens ring while I'm bidding this world have a substitute piano player over here. Sarah, yeah. Good. Praise the Lord. This, this church is just full of talent. You don't know what kind of talent you got until you try something. If anybody wants to try leading the singing, <laughs> see me. <laughs> Let's say he set me free. Once like a bird in prison I dwell, no freedom from my sorrow I felt, but Jesus came and listened to me and glory to God. Lord, set you free. You're free indeed, aren't you? We have that wonderful privilege this morning. We are going to take a prayer request. Like I said just earlier, please be a praying for all those that have lost their homes. And 
stuff down the south. Do you have any special requests this morning? Okay, do you pray for this request? Okay. Okay. Yes, let's really hold her up in prayer. Others? Remember Jerry. Okay. 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 Any others over here? Sister Nancy, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, it's really remember Sister Kay. Any over here? Yes, yes, there's a lot that, uh, yes. Pray, Lord, keep a handful of them. Yes, yes. Lift him up in prayer. Yes, yes. Yes, let's pray for healing for him. Yes. Any others? Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes, let's continue to pray for that lady. Okay. Okay, let's all stand and just Pray for these and go before the Lord, believing. Lord, we come to you this morning. Ever thankful, Lord. And Lord, we're believing that you're going to do a great work, Lord. Because, Lord, we're, we're together. We're believing together. And Lord, you said we disagree, Lord, and our faith. And Lord, that's what we're going to do this morning. 
We're going to believe that you're going to do a great work this morning. You're going to touch it with healing. Lord, we pray for Sister Kay, Lord, that you just to heal her and pray for that little baby. Lord, pray for healing for that little body, Lord. Lord, we're so thankful for you kept those that on the road that Lord is going to help you kept them saved, give them traveling mercy. And Lord, we pray for his Savior. Lord, we pray for a healing for his body. And Lord, we believe you're going to. We will believe you're going to touch her. And Lord, we pray for these other friends, pray for Sister Susie. Lord, Lord, that you will touch her with healing. Lord, she's asked for prayer this morning. She's asked for help from you. And Lord, you in no wise will turn us away. Lord, if we just believe you will do it. And Lord, we pray for you. Sister Lord's request, pray for you. you touch her, touch it. Lord, each and every way, pray for Sister Brother Eric, Lord, Papa. Lord, pray for a healing for him and all the others. Lord, you know each and every request given in, both spoken and unspoken. And we just believe that you're going to do it. So, Lord, we, do, we know in whom we serve. We know that you are all merciful and all powerful. And Lord, you love us. Lord, that's what we're asking for in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Lord and Savior. Praise you, we praise you, we praise you. Glory to the Lamb of God. Praise God. They're going to take up tithe and offering. Men, we need some. Need some volunteers for usher this morning. So we're going to ask you to come up and need eight of you this morning. And always thankful for our volunteers. Our men's always good to volunteer and help. Brother Todd, we're going to ask you to pray a blessing over the offering this morning. Glory. Thank you once again for your giving this morning and thankful for me and it uh, volunteered. Uh, do, do appreciate all of our visitors. Let's give our visitors a hand this morning. <laughs> we love visitors here at Bonnard and we appreciate you choosing and come here. We're going to start a special singing. Go to ask Sister Amy Pilots to come sing for us.
When I look around and see the good things he's done for me, I know. stop to say thank you Lord for all you've done for me and one day I'll reach heaven sure oh please let me kneel once more I've got so much to thank him for and I I've got so much to thank him for, so much to praise him for, you see. God has been so good to me, and when I think of what he's done and where he has brought me from, I've got so much to thank him for when I look around and see the good things he's done for me I know
never let your troubles get you down. Well, when life's problems come your way, just hold your head up high and say, Hallelujah, anyhow. Do it again. Well, Hallelujah, anyhow. Hey, never, never let your troubles get you down. Well, when life's problems come your way, just hold your head up high and say, Hallelujah, anyhow. Well, he's got on the platform, he's got back at the door. God in the amen corner, he's got all over the floor. I know God is God, and God don't never change. I know God is God, and he always will be God. He's God when the lightning flashes. God when the thunder rolls. God way up in heaven. Open a 
sing it and then I'll stand this morning and have some songs of praise. I think everybody's ready to worship. We're going to turn it over to Brother Eric. Let's give the Lord praise this morning. Praise God. Children's Church, everyone can be dismissed at this time. Amen. I feel the presence of the Lord in this house this morning. Amen. Surely we're in his presence. Amen. Praise God. From from the time a service started from Sunday school, amen, the presence of God has been in this place. Amen. I believe he's here to do great things in this house. Amen. Praise God. Just want to make one quick announcement this morning that was not in the bulletin. Uh, this coming Thursday, uh, which will be uh, October the, the 3rd, uh, our church is hosting uh, a regional meeting, uh, which we're involved with the state overseer and the state youth director. Uh, many of you may not know, but uh, we have a new state overseer uh, that has been there since the assembly and a new state youth director that came to Kentucky as well. So it's going to be a meet and greet uh, fellowship for all, for our district and for the Somerset district with all the pastors and uh, ministers. Uh, but if you ladies would like to help with the meal this coming Thursday, please see Christy. Uh, please see her after service. Uh, we're not doing a sign-up sheet for this meal, so if you would like to help serve or just bring a dish, uh, please give to Christy after service, and uh, she will be more than happy to share with you what's uh, taking place, what's going on. Amen. Have your Bibles this morning. Stand with me. Let's go to the book of Joshua, chapter 21, if you will. Begin to read with verse number 43. Amen. It is good to see each and every one of you in the house of the Lord. It's good to have all of our visitors here with us. We're glad to have you with us. Amen. Praise God. I'm like Brother Jeff. I pray it rains all week long. Brother Joe will bring some more produce. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But we do appreciate Brother Joe and all of our farmers we have in our church that blesses our church. Amen. Throughout the, the summer season. Amen. Joshua chapter 21. Begin to read with verse number 43. When you have it, say amen. And the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which he swore to give unto their fathers. And they possessed it and dwelt therein. And the Lord gave them rest round about. According to all that he swore unto their fathers, and there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. There fell not aught of any good thing which the Lord has spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass. Hallelujah. I want us to go back over this text. Let's go back to verse 43, if you will. And the Lord gave unto Israel all the land. Somebody say all the land. Which he swore. Another word for swear means promise. You could say which he promised to give unto their fathers. And they possessed it and dwelt therein. And the Lord gave them rest round about according to all that he swore or promised unto their fathers. And there stood not a man of all of their enemies before them. The Lord delivered all, somebody say all, their enemies into their hand. There fell not all of any good thing which the Lord has spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass. Hallelujah. Let's pray together, if you will. Dear gracious, divine, heavenly Father, Lord, we're so grateful, so thankful, God, for your presence, God, that we feel 
in this house today. God, I thank you, Lord, for what has already been done in this service today. And I pray, God, for the next few moments, God, as I preach your word, as I deliver this message, God, under this body today, to those that's with us by way of live stream, God, we pray that you touch, Lord, and minister under the hearts today. God, and we give you glory. We give you praise and honor for what you're going to do in the remainder of this service. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give him praise this morning as you're being seated. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I, I want to preach on a thought this morning, the promise keeper. The promise keeper. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, we serve a God who's the promise keeper. You look at the word promise. The word promise has a meaning to be a declaration that something will or will not be done. It is a declaration that something will be given or not given. But it is, it is a word, a surety. In one aspect or another, it is always meaning to be a word, a surety. I find this study suggests or says that in the King James Version of the Bible that there are around 3,573 promises that are made by God. I find that in the King James Version Bible that the word promise itself appears over 50 times in this version. I find also in the reading of the scripture that the first great statement of the gospel that we are to consider is, con is contained in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 where we find God's first promise of a redeemer. Hallelujah. When he said, I will put an enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. So I find also the last promise that is given in scripture is found in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 20 when Jesus says surely I come quickly it is a word of promise we find that from the very first chapter of the book of Genesis to the last chapter of the book of Revelation we find that God's word is full of promises hallelujah I love what our Sunday school teacher said this morning in Sunday school speaking of the word of God we he said nowhere in scripture are we promised defeat but everywhere in scripture we are promised victory hallelujah I'm thankful for the victory of God this morning but we find that in the word of God that each of these promises that is found in scripture is not promises that is just historical facts or theological truths but rather they are personal assurances that is given to you and I from a personal God Hallelujah. They are promises that speak to our deepest needs. They are promises that speaks to our greatest fears. And they're promises that speaks unto our most profound hopes. Hallelujah. Scripture tells us about the promises of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20 it says, For all of the promises of God are in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of of God by us. Hallelujah. One translation say one translation says it like this. For in him is the yes that affirms all of the promises of God. Hallelujah. For in him is the yes that affirms all of the promises of God. Hallelujah. Not every man on the face of this earth that makes a promise has the ability or the capability to fulfill the promise but our heavenly father this morning he's a God that has the ability and capability to keep his promises hallelujah that's where I reminded the writings of Paul in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 when he said now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think of according to the power that worketh within 
us. Hallelujah. Notice what Paul said. Now unto him that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think of. Hallelujah. His power is unlimited. And God's ability to do to fulfill the promises of his word is unlimited. Our God is still able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think of. Amen. Praise God. But think about this. God's ability. Uh-huh. As I said, some men, their ability, to, when they make a promise unto you, they, they may not have the ability or the capability to fulfill that promise. They may have good intentions, but still not have the ability to fulfill the promise that they made to you. But God has the ability to keep his promise because his ability to do is unlimited. Hallelujah. I swear I'm reminded of the psalmist of David who said who is this king of glory he said he's the Lord that is strong and mighty and the Lord that is mighty in battle hallelujah he also said God has spoken once twice have I heard this that power belongeth unto God in Psalms 147 and 5 it says great is our Lord in a great power his understanding is infinite hallelujah Hallelujah. So God's ability, his ability to fulfill his promise, hallelujah, he is unlimited. If God promised you a promise for your situation or for the place that you're in, you can rest assured and know that it will come unto being. It will come unto pass. Hallelujah. What God said he will do, he will do. Whatever promise that you have received from God, it will will come to pass. I said it will come unto pass. Amen. Praise God. Think about his ability of what he can do. There is nothing that my God cannot do. I mean, literally, as I preached before, he took the earth and he hung it on nothing. Hallelujah. He created everything in his existence. There is nothing that my God cannot do. God kept Moses' generation during the 40 years in the wilderness that their clothes never waxed old, nor did their shoes ever wear upon them. The Bible says that their feet did not even sweat. Well, for 40 years they ate manna until they came to the border of Canaan. Hallelujah. What are you talking about, Pastor? I'm talking about the ability of our God to fulfill His word and to fulfill His promise. Hallelujah. If He can take care of Moses' generation for 40 years in the wilderness, then my God, He can sustain and He can provide. And fulfill the promise upon their life. Amen. Somebody praise him in this house. I mean, think about this. For 40 years in the wilderness, that scripture says their clothes never waxed toned. Their shoes never wore upon them. Now, I can wear a pair of shoes. A dress shoes and maybe get a year's service out of them. Maybe. Just depends. Sometimes I have and sometimes I'm not. Christy has got a pair. She's got a pair in her closet for every day of the week. Uh-huh. And it's working on having a pair for every month of the year. Praise God. I noticed the other day I went to my closet. We share closets in the bedroom. And I noticed my clothes is getting scooted further down the line every day of the week. I can't understand that. I told her, I said, I I went in another day and I done this. Then I done that. She said, what are you looking at? And I just shook my head. Hallelujah. 
people have thought about this 40 years. I mean, their clothes never waxed old. 40 years, their shoes never wore upon them. For 40 years, their, their feet never did swell. And for 40 years, he fed them manna until they came to the border of Canaan. Hallelujah. I'm talking about God's ability. I said, God's ability. Hallelujah. His ability is unlimited. His ability is unmasked. His ability, hallelujah, no man can touch the ability of my God. What is impossible with man is possible with God. Hallelujah. Because he's a God of all power. Amen. Praise God. Let's talk about the character of God. Not only his ability, but the character of God. <laughs> Not every man has the best intentions of character to keep their promise. Some men will promise you things with not the best of intentions. Uh, but the character of our heavenly father to keep his promise is flawless hallelujah the character of our heavenly father to keep his promise is unmasked hallelujah his character identifies him to be holy it identifies him to be faithful it identifies him to be omnipotent and omniscient and I'm not present. His character identifies him to be eternal and to be unchangeable, to be God and to be sovereign and to be the God of power that he is. Hallelujah. That's the character of my heavenly father to fulfill and to keep the promise of his word. Amen. Praise God. Oh God. His ability to do is unlimited. His character to fulfill his promise is unmasked. What he said, he would do. Well, I got about four of you with me this morning. What he said... He would do, praise God. If he said it, hang on, baby. It's on the way. Hallelujah. If he spoke it, if he promised it, just hang on to God's unchanging hand and get ready for it. And know that you know that it's on the way. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Most people. When they receive a promise, they get ready for it. I mean, yeah. Brother Jackie told me that he was going to take me out and get me the biggest steak that a man's ever laid his eyes on. I'd get ready for it. Prepare myself for it. Somebody said, what are you going to do? I'm going to eat. I got a promise. So I'm going to get ready for it. Should we not be the same way with God? Uh -huh. As I said, in the King James Version, there's almost 3,600 promises that is made by God just in this version alone. And over 50 times that the word promise itself appears in the word of God. Hallelujah. God promised it. Should we not prepare ourselves for it? Should we not get ready for what God says that he's going going to do in our lives, in our homes, and in our families. Amen. Somebody praise him in this house. Glory to God. Prepare ourselves for it. Get ready 
for it. That we know that it's coming. His ability to do is unlimited. His character is unmasked. He does not fail. Now, Brother Jackie, he may not be able to, to take me to that state dinner. Something may come up, and he may not be able to do it, but with God, he never fails. I said, with God, he never fails. Hallelujah. Because as I just said, he's a holy God. He's a faithful God. He's a sovereign God. And my God is a God that never fails. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, God. His plan is perfect. His will is perfect. What he said will come to pass. Now, we come to our text in the book of Joshua this morning. I want us to go back all the way to chapter 1. To when all of this started with Joshua. Chapter 1 and verse 2, Scripture says, The Lord spoke to Joshua and said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan down all thy people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you as I said unto Moses. And he said, There shall not be any man to be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee so we find in chapter 1 in just 5 verses we find them to be 3 promises that was made by God unto Joshua oh notice the promise God gave to Joshua he said I want you to take the people unto the land which I do give to them in other words, I've already promised it to them. Uh, I want you to take this generation to it. Uh, every place, he said, that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you as I said unto Moses. Uh, and then in verse 5 he said there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life as I was with Moses so I will be with thee I will not fail thee nor forsake thee so we find just in chapter 1 alone that we find promise after promise after promise oh the same promises that he gave unto Moses, he's given unto Joshua. Joshua, I want you to take the people unto the land which I do give unto them. And he said, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. In other words, God's telling Joshua, the promise still stands. It's still real, hallelujah, and it's still yours. All you've got to do is to take me at my word and obey my word and my plan. Now, he also, in chapter 1, he also tells Joshua, be strong in a good courage. Only be thou strong and very courageous in verse 7. And then again in verse 9, he said, Be strong in a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thou God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Yeah. So what is he telling Joshua? He gives Joshua the same promises. That he gave unto Moses. 
And then he tells him, be strong and a good courage. Then again in verse number 7, he said, only be thou strong. And this time he said, very courageous. Uh -huh. And then two verses, uh, two verses down, he said, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. Here's a man, Joshua. From the tribe of Ephraim. He served alongside of Moses all the way from his youth. And as Brother Jeff talked about in Sunday school this morning, that Joshua and Caleb was the only two men, had 12 spies that literally believed that God would give them the land. Notice what he's telling Joshua I've got the promise for you. I will see, I will see to it that it's fulfilled. All I want you to do is to remain strong and very courageous. In other words, take me at my word. Believe what I said can come to pass. Do you believe the promises of God upon your life? What God's promised you, what God has spoken over you, do you believe that God can do it? Do you believe that it can come to pass? If you believe it, like Joshua and Caleb, as they saw it with their own eyes, you can witness the glory and the manifestation of the power of God upon your life. Amen. Somebody praise him in this house. Now, Moses' generation, the first generation after Egypt, the Lord called them an evil generation. That's what he called them, an evil generation. Read your Bible in the book of Deuteronomy. He called them an evil generation. For they would not, he says, see the good land. That was promised unto their fathers because of their disobedience and unbelief. Because of their idolatrous ways. God, Brother Jeff, showed them his glory time and time again. They witnessed the delivering power of God. How that God sustained them. How that God kept them. How that God brought them out of Egypt. Brought them out of a place of bondage and delivered their lives. But yet, they just could not seem to get to the place where they believed the promise and the word of the Lord that God would bring them unto the promised land. Started murmuring and complaining. I love that this morning the Sunday school teacher talked about murmuring. If you don't think God can hear you murmur, he can. You know, a lot of folks like to murmur underneath the voice, you know. Yeah. They, they want to murmur and complain, thinking nobody else will hear them. But, but there's one. So if you've been murmuring this week, God heard you. If you've been complaining, guess what? God heard you. I got about five of you now. God heard you. And they started murmuring and complaining. And they started looking back into Egypt and saying, We've been a lot better off if you just left us back there in Egypt to die and to wither away. But they witnessed the power of God. They knew that He could deliver. They knew that it was God that could keep them and sustain them. But yet, because of their disobedience in all the promise. And they forfeited the promises of God that was upon their lives. That the only two, Brother Gary, out of the, all of that generation, from 20 years old and up, that saw 
and received the promise was Joshua and Caleb. The Bible said to Caleb, the Lord said, Caleb, you and your children shall receive the promise. Uh -huh. You shall see that good land because you have wholly followed me. That was the word of the Lord unto Caleb. Oh, glory to God. And you know the story of how that Caleb received his inheritance. Oh, if God can do it for Caleb, if he can do it for Joshua, then he can do it for you. All you need to do is to believe God. Don't allow disobedience to know the promise of God. God and the forfeit the word and the promises of God that he's spoken over your life oh because you can know the promise of God through your disobedience hello they forfeited the promises of God had laid up for them because of their unbelief and disobedience. But the word of God, the promises of God are sure. His word will stand when this world is on fire. His word will stand regardless of what the White House Congress or Senate does. Regardless of what they do to try to change the word of God. They cannot change it. The word of God will stand the tested times. The word of God will stand when this world is in a place of chaos like it is. The word of God will still stand. Amen. So be careful with your disobedience. Because God has got greater for you. I said God has got greater for you. He didn't bring you where you are to forsake you now. He didn't bring you where you are to fail you now. He didn't bring you where you are to leave you now. God has got greater. I said God has got greater. There's a promise over your life in the word of God. Believe it. I said believe it and he shall come to pass. Amen. Somebody give him praise in this house. Now, God was telling Joshua in chapter 1, the same promise that was given to Moses was the same for him. And Joshua had to separate his faith from the faith that he had in Moses. There's a danger in the second, third generations of Christians today. First generation knew God. Second generation knows about God. And the third generation that we're living in today knows a man that knows about God. For the promises of God to be fulfilled in your life, he's got to become your God. I said he's got to become your God not just the God of the forefathers but God spoke to Joshua Moses was dead he was already passed and now the word of the Lord was upon Joshua now the mantle was upon Joshua to lead the children of Israel unto the promised land Joshua had to have faith in God God's going to bring it unto pass Bring this generation into the promised land. Now, there's a promise to this last day generation. How I many of you have seen on the news this week a revival that's breaking out in colleges and universities? Arkansas. In an arena this week, thousands coming to an arena. Nobody is making them come. They just opening the door, and thousands of young people is walking through the door. And they're just coming in there, and you know what they're doing? They don't have no set format. They don't have no playing service. All they're doing is just worshiping God. 
Get on the news. Watch it. All they're doing is just praising God, proclaiming the word of God, coming to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, being baptized, being filled with the power of God. That's all they're doing. It's just worshiping God. And you know what it is? It's a fulfillment of the promise of God unto this last day generation. Because this is what the promise is. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters, they shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. And on my service and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit. And they shall prophesy. It is a promise of God. It is a promise of God that is being fulfilled in these last days that we're living in. Amen. Somebody praise him in this house. God's going to have a people that's going to worship him. God's going to have a people that's going to speak and proclaim his word. It's being fulfilled right now. A promise of God. And I know you're just the same as me. I want to get under the spout. I want to stay under the spout where the glory of God is running out. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God promised us a revival. He promised us an outpouring of His Spirit. And right now, God is pouring out His Spirit. I said, God is pouring out His Spirit in these last days. Amen. Somebody give him praise. Because he's a promise keeper. He's a promise keeper. I want you to go with me to our text. Verse number 43. Go to verse 43 of our text, Brother Danny. It's Joshua chapter 21. Through the storms, through the valleys, to the battles of conquest, to marching around Jericho's walls, to God giving them favor through the heart of Rahab, to all of the battles, dethroning all of the kings in the land, moving out all of the enemies that they had to conquer through it all. Through it all, God kept his promise I said through it all God kept his promise here's what he done and the Lord my God and the Lord no one else but the Lord and the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which he swore, meaning which he promised to give unto their fathers. They possessed it and dwelt therein. So through it all, they received the promise. I said through it all, they received the promise. Through it all, you can receive the promise of God that is upon your life through all the storms, through all all the battles, throughout all of the trials, you can receive the promise of the Lord that is upon your life. If you just believe. And the Lord, somebody say, and the Lord gave unto Israel all the land. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly before him. Is that not what the word says? No good thing will our God, uh, whose ability to do is unmasked, whose character I got to fulfill the promise is flawless. Hallelujah. No good thing will our God withhold from them that walk uprightly before him. And the Lord gave unto Israel all of the land which he swore, promised to give unto their fathers, and they possessed it. 
and they possessed it. Don't forfeit your promise. Don't know the promise of God and it's upon your life through disobedience and through unbelief. But believe God. Take God in his word that he's a deliverer, that he's a healer, that he's a way maker, whatever you need in your life. Believe the promise is coming. Believe the promise will be fulfilled. Believe that God is going to perform it on your life. Amen. Somebody give him praise in this house and the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which he promised to give unto their fathers and they possessed it and dwelt therein go to the next verse come to the piano if you will and the Lord gave them rest peace round about according to all that he promised Swear under their fathers, and there stood not a man of all their enemies. How many remembers chapter 1? What did he say? There will not be a man that will be able to stand before thee. I will deliver the enemies under your hand. Is that not what the Lord promised them? Are you with me this morning? Is that not what he promised him in chapter 1? Here we find in chapter 21, notice what the promise that was fulfilled. And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. The Lord delivered all. Somebody say all. The Lord delivered all of their enemies into their hand. God done what he said he would do. God kept them. He sustained them and he delivered them from the power of their enemies. Amen. Praise God. The Lord delivered all of their enemies. Not just a few. Not just a, a handful. But all of their enemies into their hand. Go to verse 45. And there fell not aught of any good thing which the Lord has spoken unto the house of Israel. All, somebody say all. Say it again. All, all came to pass. All came to pass. All came to pass. What does that three letter word mean? All, what does that mean? It means all. Everything come to pass exactly as God said that it would come to pass. Amen. Somebody praise him in this house. He's a promise keeper. I said he's a promise keeper. What he said he'll do. Chapter 1, he told them what he wanted to do. And what he would do for them along the journey. And chapter 21, we find the, the promise of God fulfilled. That there fell not all of any good thing which the Lord has spoken unto them, and all came to pass. You and I has got a blessed promise today. Do you know what that is? That's a promise that says, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am there you may be also. Oh, there's a promise that says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trumpet of God's going to sound those that's dead in Christ. He's going to rise first in. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the air to meet them in the clouds of glory. So shall we ever be with the Lord. It's a promise unto the church of the living God today. Oh. All we got to do is hold fast unto that promise. But until I get to the other side, he's promised me that he would keep me. 
He's promised me that he would sustain me. He's, a, he's promised me he would take care of me. He's promised me that all things will work together for the good of them to love God. It's called according to his purpose. He's promised me he'd be my provider. Hallelujah. And he'd be Jehovah Chow in my life. He has promised me that he would keep me until I reach that other side. Sister Amy, I want you to come up here a second. I want to show you what the promises of God. What he's promised in his word, he will do. He's promised us he'd comfort us. He's promised us he would sustain us. Come here, Sister Amy. I want you to tell the story. How that your son and your daughter-in-law got out of Asheville, North Carolina, when nobody else could get out. I seen on the news yesterday morning, there's no way out of Asheville. The only way you can get out of Asheville, North Carolina right now is through air right now. But I want you to listen to this, what God would do to take care of his people. What God would do when he hears the prayers of a praying mother, what God would do, he will fulfill his promise. I said he'll fulfill his promise. I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. He'll fulfill his word. I want you to listen evacuated that morning they headed home uh, they was 10 cars back from the road collapsing through they got told to turn around and go back so they went back to Asheville we couldn't get a hold of them most of the time because there was no service so they finally called and they was in a parking lot and he said dad if I move either way I have no cell phone service I have to sit right here there was no food places open. There was no hotels open. What was open was full. They couldn't get a room. So this was early on in the evening. And my husband said, just sit tight right there in the parking lot for the night. So my, they messaged early that morning. And there was a truck driver that had told Brady, he said, I've drove around for five hours trying to get out. I've went every direction. There's no possible way out. We're stuck here. So Brady said he woke up about 1.30 and he heard traffic and a guy told him, I'm going to try to get out, which they shouldn't have been on the road. There was a curfew. They wasn't supposed to be out on the road. And he said, if I make it, I'll call you. He called Brady, which was amazing that he even called, and he told him a way out. And Brady left and they got out safely and they're in Charlotte, North Carolina. They're safe. They're in Sunny. They're at a football game today and they're headed home Tuesday. Won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? Oh, my God, fulfill his promise. Won't God keep his promise? What he said he would do. I said, what he said he will do. All you got to do in times of despair, in times that you don't understand, and in times that you just don't have an answer, in times like Sister Amy and her husband and her husband Aaron, in times that there was no way to get to their children, no way to get to them. Oh, won't God, won't God, won't He do it? Won't He keep His word? Won't He keep His promise? If we we'll just be obedient to Him and stay faithful to God and give it to the Lord, God for will fulfill. His promise in His Word. I want you to stand with me all over the house. He promised us the same thing and He promised Joshua. He said, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. Sister Amy, Aaron's son and daughter-in-law. They was in Asheville, North Carolina without any family, but they's not alone. I said, they's not alone. And today, if you go to Asheville, North Carolina, you're going to stay there. If you can even get in, you can't get in. But if you, for some reason you got in, you're not coming out. But God used a driver just to point in the direction that they needed to go. He never leaves. I said he never leaves. He's a promise keeper. He's a promise keeper. I want every head bowed and every eye closed in this house. 
There may be one in